Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Libis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. A woman is found lifeless on the road. Mystery surrounds what happened. Also tonight, officials change the scenemized entry protocols. We have the details. And the island's only college will get a major, major facelift real soon. In sports, the M League returns for a summer slate of soccer. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Good morning, Kiko. I am here at Docomo Walleri Branch. The Docomo staff here are super helpful with my appointment. They take good care of me in just a few minutes. Thank you so much for helping me out downloading and using the Skid Lionel app. I can take care of all my Docomo needs. No need to wait in line with the Skid Lionel app. We love you, Docomo Pacific. Better together. I would recommend websites like the CDC website, Mayo Clinic website, any established um, hospital system or healthcare system. I suspect that Kaiser has a lot of information out there. I would go um, to known websites, WebMD, Healthline, they all have a, a, a lot of information that is reliable and w well thought out. I would much less go to blogs and the individuals who are looking at it from their own perspective and not necessarily science. And there you have it. McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich. You'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. I am the I in CNMI. We are a team, and you cannot spell team without me. M-E. Get a shot. An opportunity to set the CNMI free from COVID-19. Go for a save, a strikeout, a knockout punch. That's our goal. V for victory. V for vaccinate. Let's make this a team win and we can all celebrate. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Wednesday, July 28, 2021. Police are investigating the death of a 20-year-old local woman who was found dead on the side of the road up in the north side. On Tuesday, July 27, just before 10 p.m., the CNMI Department of Public Safety dispatch units to Marpy, just north of Camp Pacific, where Sophia Patricia de Mopon was found unresponsive, lying on the roadway. Medics from the CNMI Department of Fire and Emergency Medical Services arrived and began patient assessment. De Mopon had multiple lacerations and deformities. Furthermore, she sustained multiple fractures with severe injuries to the head. De Mopon was transported to CHCC where she was pronounced dead at 1 a.m. by Dr. Brian Strickland. DPS states the case is under further investigation at this time. 
Police, however, reported that tire marks were noticed at the scene, and the area is quite known to be where illegal drag races are held, even though there are police stationed at the Marianas Resort. The Mapons family, along with concerned members of the community, are pleading to whoever hit her to turn themselves in so the family can get closure. If you have any information that may help the case, please call 911. Or if you want to remain anonymous, you may call the Crime Stoppers hotline at 237-7272. Entry requirements are eased for fully vaccinated travelers as the CNMI hits the 70% mark of reaching herd immunity. Beginning today, fully vaccinated travelers are no longer required to be tested upon arrival into the CNMI. They are, however, still required to be tested after five days. Household assessments will be conducted to verify whether they may proceed to their home or to the government quarantine facility. Those who are vaccinated outside the CNMI must also show proof by providing an official immunization record from their provider. CHCC will be able to verify those vaccinated in the CNMI. If any individual does not follow the fifth day testing, they will be isolated at the government facility. Travelers are encouraged to fill out the mandatory health declaration form if they want faster processing for modified quarantine. Representative Ed Probes has concerns on the new entry protocols, especially since a lot of those who opt for home quarantine doesn't really stay home and still goes out to the community. My concern is for, of course, first and foremost, always the safety of our community. Um, what happens on day five if you do test positive? And if you've attended huge functions, say, for, for example, like big weddings, something very common here, and you uh, come encounter with hundreds and hundreds of family members, hugging them, kissing them, and, and, and celebrating with them, um, that's just a concern. Probe states the CNMI has a much better way of controlling the borders than any other state or territory, and this new protocol is pretty risky. And we must maintain that just strictly for the, the safety, the health, and the, and the welfare of our people. I, I do understand about, you know, allowing uh, this travel bubble to, to happen. I, I am supportive of that, but again, with extreme uh, cautious, uh, being extremely cautious uh, as we move forward. We do not want to slip or um, allow it to come and, and spread throughout our, our islands. We've, we've come so far, we should continue to, to look out for the safety and the best interests of our people. A special election will be held soon for the sudden passing of Representative Ivan Blanco. House Speaker Edmund Villagomez explains the process. Um, in terms of what's the process next to fill his seat, um, you know, it, it will be, uh, from my understanding, it will be a special election because there's still uh, more than half the term that needs to be served. Um, so we are in the process of clarifying whether uh, um, a letter of vacancy is necessary, but we will do one whether it's necessary or not just to cover all bases. Um, so we just want to clarify that the governor's proclamation of the untimely passing of uh, the Honorable Representative uh, Ivan Blanco, uh, some may argue that that will suffice, uh, but uh, we'll work out the kinks from there. Governor Torres and Lieutenant Governor Palacios support the college plans to rebuild and transform the campus into a college town. Take a listen. Officials from the Northern Marianas College met with Governor Ralph Torres and Lieutenant Governor Arnold Palacios to discuss ongoing projects, such as the plan to transform the campus into a college town. NMC President Dr. Galvin Delon Guerrero states the aftermath of Super Typhoon Newtu gave them an opportunity to rebuild from the ground up. Frankie and his team has done a great job of making sure that as we rebuild, it's very, very intentional and that we are rebuilding um, uh, a layout of a campus that will not only make sense for the future of the college, but will also revitalize, um, reinvigorate the economies of uh, the Astrolahi and Dan Dan area. The idea is to build a college town, and then you know to also do the same on Tinian and Luther. Dr. G states they are about 95% complete with their facilities master plan, which will be used as a guide for all future constructions. And as soon as that's done, we then move into the actual kind of A&E design and construction phase. Because um, we want to be sure that whatever we build is um, following that plan and not just haphazard. 
we, we want to be sure that you know that we're really thinking of the future needs of the Commonwealth as well as the future needs of the college. The administration is in support and says they will make sure the new facility is expedited for the students. We have our uh, permitting team, uh, IRP, which is the new office uh, or program, the Infrastructure Recovery Program. We are going to be, we're going to dedicate a team for NMC to expedite uh, their process. Dr. G acknowledged the governor and lieutenant governor for their support and also recognized former interim president Frankie Elliptical. I'm very happy to be joining him and the team as, you know, with everything that they built at the college. Uh, they've sailed that proa through some of the most turbulent waters, whether it be typhoons, austerity measures, um, you know, a pandemic. They kept it afloat, they kept it sailing ahead, and now we're just really excited to be building upon that success uh, towards a brighter future, whether it's new facilities, new programs, higher enrollment, um, and just meeting the workforce needs and the overall needs of the CNMI. And we look forward to that continuing partnership with the administration. Coming up, a very important man is on island and the legislature addresses him. My doctor gave me the pills, so they must be safe, right? If taken exactly as prescribed, short-term use can be safe, but painkillers have real risk. Misusing an opioid painkiller can cause serious harm, including addiction and death, and misuse can happen quite easily. Make sure you never mix them with alcohol, antidepressants, sedatives, or sleep aids. And if you are prescribed an opioid, you need to tell your doctor about any other drugs, including herbal supplements that you are taking. It only takes a little to lose a lot. The Road to 80 continues with $2,000 in cash, brought to you in part by this week's featured sponsor, Helios Engineering Group. This is the CNMI's push for an 80% vaccination rate, and we've got thousands of dollars and a Nissan Rogue Sport to drive us there. Watch the next drawing this Friday, July 30th, on the Road to 80 CNMI Facebook page. Register for your shot today at vaccinatecnmi.com or call 682-SHOT. The Road to 80 is brought to you by the Office of the Governor, COVID-19 Task Force, Commonwealth Health Care Corporation, Joe 10 Enterprises, Bridge Capital, Tan Holdings, and more. So up until now, the only ways we've had to fight COVID are closing things down, which has been really hard on people here in the CNMI. Um, a lot of people have lost jobs, and a lot of people have lost incomes. Uh, and although it's been effective, it's not sustainable. It's not something we can do forever. Um, vaccination is a way for us to safely resume a lot of those things that bring vibrancy to the CNMI, to hopefully reopen to tourism in some safe capacity, to get people back to work in various service industries. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. The House of Representatives and members of the Senate gathered this afternoon to present a joint legislative resolution to the 26th Commandant of the United States Coast Guard. On behalf of the 22nd Legislature and the people of the Commonwealth, we present to you House Bill Resolution 22-7 to honor and commend the United States Coast Guardsmen that have served under your leadership. Sir. This was adopted by the committee as a whole on both houses, the, the House and the Senate, including the support of our late leader, Representative Ivan Blanco. We thank you and the Coast Guard for your service to our country and the CNMI. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Admiral Carl Schultz is on the island of Saipan for his regular visits. In his address to the legislature, he acknowledged that there are 17 active sons and daughters of the Marianas who are in the U.S. Coast Guard. He also shared that the U.S. Coast Guard supported the Sinamaya after Super Typhoon U2. The U.S. Coast Guard as well conducts search and rescue for local fishermen or mariners who get lost at sea. House Speaker Villa Gomez states the joint legislative action to commend Schultz took months in advance. And we, we've been planning his uh, visit uh, for, I would say, maybe three months, around two to three months. Um, in the beginning, it seemed like he might not have a, you know, the time to come visit, but th we made it possible. And uh, we, we really appreciate his, his presence and his service, uh, not only to our country, but to the CNMI as well. And, you know, for his company being here. It's such an honor to hold this joint meeting and to present him uh, with a small token of our appreciation for his service to the CNMI and also his leadership. And, uh, you know, with his leadership, we have CNMI residents, sons and daughters of our own, you know, serving under his leadership. So it's, it's the least we can do to recognize their hard work and his leadership as well. We now turn it over to KOAM to find out the latest news on Guam. Half a day seen on my Guahu again, and here's what's making news on Guam. Senator Frank Bloss Jr. isn't checking out in an audit released by the public auditor on the procurement of hotels last year to serve as the government's quarantine and isolation facility. He's calling on the AG to investigate. He's a member of the Committee on Public Accountability, and that's exactly what Senator Frank Bloss Jr. wants to see someone held accountable for three million dollars in question costs for last year's first round of procurement of hotels used as quarantine and isolation facilities the audit found the governor lacked procurement authority the governor's legal counsel and son-in-law had a conflict of interest with one of the hotels there was an incomplete procurement record and the quarantine and isolation facilities did not conform to the requirements in the governor's executive order and procurement law According to the letter from Senator Blas to Attorney General Levin Camacho, it appears that what was done was illegal and somebody has to answer for it. Acting Governor Josh Tenorio. I guess I'd have the same response as last year. Because of the way this procurement or whatever this was for these hotels, uh, these quarantine facilities slash isolation facilities were handled, in your opinion and your experience, would this raise a red flag with FEMA in terms of well, reimbursement? Sure. Yeah, of course. You know, they have to, any trend, any large transaction should, it, it's not necessarily a red flag, but it should, everything will be scrutinized. You know, even the best procurements have to go through uh, the scrutiny and make sure that they're in compliance and only then will they get paid. So for sure, this one, I think the definitely on all fronts, uh, all the details of this procurement certainly will have to be uh, reviewed. The acting governor deferring comment on the call for an investigation to the attorney general's office, which he says has statutory authority to review the audit findings and to make a case for recommendations. The AG's office, however, also provided guidance on this procurement last year, even so far as refusing to answer questions from senators during last year's marathon oversight hearing on the issue claiming attorney-client privilege. Stay informed 24-7 by checking out KUAM.com or downloading the KUAM News app available for iOS or Android. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Cia Again. Thank you. Coming up, call the masters of the motocross, graybeards, grizzled vets, whatever. Just don't call them slow. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Opioids are commonly prescribed drugs. They can help ease short-term pain after surgery, an accident, or illness. 
Common brand names include Vicodin, Demerol, Oxycontin, and Percocet. Opioids can be very addictive, and they can actually change how your brain works. Opioid misuse can lead to death. If you are prescribed an opioid medication, talk to your doctor. Always take exactly as directed, never take higher doses, keep your medication secure, and safely dispose of unused or expired medication. It only takes a little to lose a lot. All workers have the right to a safe workplace. Employers must provide a workplace that is free from recognized hazards and comply with applicable OSHA standards, including proper reporting of injuries. Training needs to be done in a language and vocabulary employees can understand. And an OSHA information poster must be displayed prominently in the workplace. Workers, you have the right to raise a safety or health concern with your employer or OSHA without being retaliated against. And request an OSHA consultation of your workplace if you believe there are unsafe or unhealthy conditions. OSHA can help. Free assistance to identify and correct hazards is available to small and medium-sized employers without citation or penalty. So look out, speak up, and stay safe. Job safety and health, it's not only good practice, it's the law. Check out OSHA.gov or call 664-3154 or 3155. Tonight Sports brought to you in part by Tan Holdings through the Tan Su Lin Foundation, making communities a better place to live. Buenas Sports fans. Buenas sports fans, the Premier League opened up last weekend and you know it's like a box of chocolates. Let's open it up and see if there were any surprises. Sunday night under the lights, it's the final game of a busy weekend. This season has a game on Thursday evening, two on Friday nights and four on Sundays. There are two leagues, a Premier League that consists of six teams and a recreational league that's comprised of eight teams. That's 14 teams and all over 200 players in the summer league in 2021. Pirey FC in blood red was taken on Kanoa FC in orange and white. KFC in good position inside the box, but look how Pirey crowds the goal. The shot comes in and not enough power on it, and it's an easy save. Oh, 
final minutes of this contest. Jara Yobe, the cross. Pyrie gets a shot on goal, but right to the goalie. Witt sees Danny Aguto open in the middle. He turns, he drills, he scores! Final score, Pyrie FC 6, KFC 2. More tonight on the thrilling and spilling conclusion to the Marianas Racing Association's championship point season. See that wall? That's all that's left standing of the original Cowtown with restaurant, bar, and outdoor movie theater all wiped out and replaced by a motocross track that's improved each month. 11 divisions, all ages, all good. Some like the old guys the best, you know. What are you looking forward to the most? The veterans. The veterans. Yeah. Always the best. Yeah, right they save the best for last. Yeah. Right on, right? All right. In the veterans class, heat number one. On bank 111, Cookie Alvarez. On bank 55, the mayor of Marfi, Dave Sillis. On bank 21, Charles, the instigator, Cepeda. On bank 827, Melvin, the whip, Cepeda. Riding bank 32, Glenn Pangelinan. On bike number eight, Champi Villacanes. On bike 327, Ray Yumo. And on bike 121, Bob Ferrer. There he is, the mayor of Marpy, Dave Sellis, with the early lead in this six-lap race with Pookie and Mel hot on his muffler. <laughs> Sellis takes the checkered flag, Melvin the whip, second. While Kuki, a.k.a. the janitor, cleaned up third place, Charles Cepeda fourth. Dave went back to being a race official, so let's talk to Mel and Kuki. That was one of the best races I've ever seen. What happened out there? Huh? It was uh, a little bit uh, slippery, but can uh, manage it. That was a heck of a veteran's race. These veteran dudes are no joke, man. Props to them, hats off to them. They're, they're going, man. I thought they were going to get tired. I thought I was the guy that was in better <laughs> shape, but, man, with the last race of the season, everybody's uh, just improving so much that I shouldn't have let the gas off. I didn't let the gas off. He passed me fair and square. But I just have to hold the gas a little longer next time. Next time will be 2022 for these riders to gear up. Here's the wind-up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough of my lips to be out. Let me back in the night. Drop into the Shake Cafe at Gold's Gym for a quick and healthy meal. It's fast food that's good for you. Our July Smoothie of the Month has oatmeal, peanut butter, raisins, and cinnamon. It's a healthy blend of 450 calories that's perfect for a meal replacement or supplement. Shake it up at Gold's Gym. EcoCamp starts Monday, July 12th at Mariana's Trekking Camp. Activities include hiking, snorkeling, off-road and kayaking, field trips, arts and crafts, and go-karting. You can sign up online at marianastrekking.com. Just $100 per session includes lunch. See you at EcoCamp. Get out and get into gear at EcoCamp. Designed for ages 6 and above. Experience go-karting, off-roading, kayaking, snorkeling, hiking, and field trips. Sign up online at marianastrekking.com and take advantage of a special weekly rate of $100, including lunch. Starts July 12th. See you at EcoCamp. You have a phone, a game, an iPad, a laptop? Good. Leave them at home because the screen time at EcoCamp is sunscreen. 
hike, bike, kayak, snorkel, off-road, and go-kart. Eco Camp starts July 12th at Marianas Trekking. Sign up at MarianasTrekking.com. Our weather report for today indicates a high temperature of 89, the low 82, and that ties the highest low of 2021. The humidity 73%. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy, isolated showers here and, the wind, here and there, and winds light and variable. High 89, low 80, seas three to five feet. Sunrise two minutes before six. A low tide at 6.43 in the morning. Another morning high tide at 11.54. Sunset at 6.48. That's your new sports band weather on this Wednesday. See you back here on Friday. Thank you for watching.